Hello, in today's video, I'm going to be solving 2023 NECO pass question in mathematics. And of course, this will also be relevant to those taking SAT exams, ART exam, IGCSE, IGSCE, GED, YEC, and the likes. Stay tuned. Make sure you like this video. If you have not subscribed yet, please ensure you subscribe. Question 1 says, decrease 120 by 25 percent. Decreasing 120 by 25 percent is equivalent to 75 percent of 120. Likewise, increasing 120 by 25 percent is equivalent to 125 percent of 120. So let's do it. So this is same as 75. It's equivalent to 75% of 120, which is 75 over 100 times 120 over 1. 25 can go here 3, 25 here is 4, 4 can go here 30, and 3 times 30 is 90. So the correct option is C. 2 says find the product of 10110. And one one by base two. So one zero one one zero multiply one one or in base two. If you times this, it's just repeated one zero one one zero. And the same thing we start from here to be one zero one one zero. So we add this in base two. This is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 in base 2 is 10. Write down 0, carry 1. 1 plus 1 is 10. Write down 0, carry 1. 1 plus 1 is 10. Write down 0, carry 1. 1 plus 1 is 10. Write down 0, carry 1. And then put the 1. You can decide to say 1 plus 1 is 2. Divide by 2. 1 remainder. 0, you write down the remainder 0, you carry the 1. 1 plus 1, 2. Divide by 2, which because which is in base 2, is 1 remainder 0. You write the remainder, carry the 1. The same thing. So the correct option is A. Express 5 plus 2 over 100 plus 3 over 1,000 plus 4 over 100,000. So this is equivalent to... 5 plus 2 over 100 is 0 0.02. 3 over 1,000 is 0 0.003. 4 over 100,000 is 0 0.00004. And if we add this, this is 5.023. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is the answer. And this is C. Question 4 says simplify 2 root 5 over root 10. I can decide to write this as 2 root 5 over root 5 times 2 because 5 times 2 is 10, which is 2 root 5 over root 5 times root 2. Root 5 can cancel root 5, so this is the same as 2 over root 2. 2 over root 2 in solve is times root 2 over root 2. And this is 2 root 2 over 2 times root 2 times root 2 is root 4 and root 4 is 2. And the answer is root 2, which is C. Question 5 says a boy walks 88 paces, 88 paces in a minute. If his average pace if his average pace length is 0 0.55 meter, meaning just a pace length like this is 0 0.55 meter, which is like 55 centimeter, what fraction of an hour will it take him to walk 1,936 meters? So his average foot pace is 55 cm, which is 0 0.55 meters in one minute 
his average base length will be 88 times 0 0.55 meter. So one pace is 0 0.5 meter, 88 paces will be 0 0.5 meter times 88. And this is 48.4 meters. We are looking for how many minutes will it take him to get to 1,936 1, meters. So we we'll cross multiply to get an equation. This will be 48.4x equals 1936. Divide by 48.4. And 40 minutes in hour will be 60 minutes make one hour will be 40 over 60, which is 2 over 3, which is D. C says, find S if 3 times 8 is X mod 9. This is modular arithmetic. What the question is saying is, what is 24 in mode 9? What we would just simply do is, divide 24 by 9, the remainder is what is X, that's all. So 24 in mode 9 is 24 over 9. We divide 24 by 9, this is 2 remainder because 9 times 2 is 18, 6. Therefore, 24 is 6 mode 9. So x is 6, which is c. For question 7, we are told that if log 3 base 10 is 0 0.4771, evaluate log 8.1 base 10. All we need to do is to express this in base 3 and then substitute. And so for us to do that, log 8.1 base 10 is same as log 81 over, 100, over 10, because 81 over 10 is same as this base 10, which is from laws of logarithm, this is log 81 base 10 minus log 10 base 10. And 81 can be expressed in 3 as 3 to the power 4. So we'll have log 3 to the power 4 base 10 minus log base 10 to base 10 is 1 because log of any base, log of a number to the same base is 1. So what we have here is from laws of logarithm, the power multiply the log. So this is 4 log 3 base 10 minus 1. So we substitute log 3 base 10 has been given as 0.4771. So we have 4 times 0.4771 minus 1. And if we do that, we will have 0 0.9084, which is D. Question 2 says, given that 2 log y equals 8 log p plus 4 log q, Express y in terms of p and q. So we'll use the laws of logarithm also. So I can take this to power of y. We'll have log y square. The same thing here, this log p to power 8. We're just doing the reverse of what we did here. Plus log q to power 4. So we'll have log y square. Because they are in the same base, most times it is said that if the base is not specified, base 10 is implied. So, of course, they are in the same base. So, because we are adding, this is same as log p to power 8 times q to power 4. Because if we express this, from the laws of logarithm, we'll get back to this. Because the two equations are in the same base, it means y square have to be equal to this. So y square have to equal p to power 8, q to power 4. If you take the square root of both sides, y will be p to power 8, q to power 4, raised to power 1 over 2. And from laws of indices, this power multiplied the powers inside. We will have p 8 over 4, 2 is 4. And 4 over 2 is 2, which is E. Now it says calculate the compound interest of 1, 2 
for four years at 8% per annum. One can decide to follow the longer process, which is you find 8% of this for the first year. After finding the 8% of this, you add this to this principal and find 8% of the new amount for the second year. You keep accumulating it up to four years. At the end of the day, you now sum all the interest together. You compound it. So an easy way is to use the formula for amount. Formula for amount says principal times 1 plus the rate over 100 to the number of years. And if we substitute, principal is 1 to 1 plus 8 over 100 to power 4. And so if we simplify this, we'll have 1 to this is 8 over 100 is 0 0.08. This is 1.08 raised to the power 4. Multiplying this, this is 1632.586. So this is our amount. But you know that amount is principal plus interest. And so our interest will now be amount minus principal. So to find the interest, the compound interest, the compound interest will be the amount is 1632.586 minus 1, 2. If we subtract, we should get 432.586. We approximate this. This will be 432.2 in two decimal place 59, which is C. Question 10 says, given the sets A, B, and C, such that A is this, B is this, and C is this, find A union B intersection A union C. What is A union B? A union B is the collection of all the a union B is the collection of the set of A and B together without repetition. So we put A and B together without repetition. We we'll have, let's put the alphabet. We we'll have A, B, C, D, and the numbers 1, 4, 6, 7, 9. And the next is A union C. A union C is putting this together with a repetition will be alphabet first A, C, D, and numbers 1, 4, we have 2, 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, Nine, and if we take the intersection of this A union B intersection A union C, what is common between these two? That is the intersection. What can you see here and see here also? This will be we are seeing A, we are seeing A, there is no B, there is C, there is D. There is 1, there is 4, and there is 9. So, ACD, ACD 149, which is E. Question level says, in a chemistry class, a student recorded 21.23 cm cube for the title value, which is supposed to be 21.32 cm cube. Find the percentage error correct to one decimal place. So you remember, percentage error is given as true value minus estimated value over true value times 100%. So the true value was supposed to be 21.32. The estimated value is 21.23. Over true value 21.32 times 
times 100 percent. So if we subtract these two, this will give us 0 0.09 over 21.32 times 100 percent. So this is like 9 over 21.32. This is 0.422 percent, which is 0.4b. For question 12, in an arithmetic progression, the first term is 3, and the, and the sum of the third and the twelfth terms is 38 and a half. What is the 17th term? So we know the first term. We'll use the third and the twelfth term to find the common difference, and then use the first term and the common difference to find the 17th term. So the first term A is 3. Third term, we know we write third term as a plus 2d, and we write 12th term for an AP as a plus 11d. So if their sum is 38, how do we find this? So a plus 2d, where a is 3, so 3 plus 2d plus 3 plus 11d gives 38 and a half, 38.5. So 3 plus 3 is 6. 2 plus 11 is 13D because 38.5. 13 d if we subtract 6 from both sides, will be 32.5. I divide both sides by 13. We'll have D as 2.5. Now, the 17th term, the 17th term is written as A plus N minus 1D. So that you will wonder how I'm writing this like this. So 17 means 17 minus 1, which is A plus 16D. A is 3, which is 3 plus 16 times 2.5. 3 plus 16 times 2.5 is 40. And so this is 43, which is B. Question 13 is very interesting. We are told that the Venn diagram below shows the number of students who wrote biology, physics, and mathematics during NECO SSCE in a certain school. Find the number of students who wrote at least two subjects. At least two subjects means they wrote two above, that is two and three. And the total number of students in the school, respectively. Those who wrote at least two subjects are those who wrote. Biology and physics 5, biology and mathematics 7, physics and mathematics 1. So, number of students of at least two subjects is 5 plus 7 plus 1. 5 plus 7 plus 1. This is 5 plus 7 is 12 plus 1 is the total number of students respectively is summing everything. 6 plus 5 is 11. 11 plus 3 is 14. 14 plus 7 is 21. 21 plus 1 is 22. 22 plus 10 is 32. Total number of students is 32. So we have 32. Question 14 says, this third term of a GP is 18, and the sixth term is 486. Find the first term. So the formula for a GP, a GP the n term formula for a GP is a to the power arrow n minus 1. So, third term will be a to the power r to the power 2. So, a to the power r to the power 2, which is the third term, is 18. Sixth term is a to the power r to the power 6 minus 1. 5 is 486. To find the first term, 
since they are product we can divide if this is equation one this is equation two we can say equation two divided by equation one which will be a r of the power five a r of the power two 486 over 18. A can cancel A. This is R to power, because they are in the same base, we subtract the powers. 5 minus 2 is 3, is 27. And so from this, we we'll have that R is cube root of 27, which is 3. Now, the question is, what is the first step? So we can use any of the equation to find the first step. Since we have gotten what? the ratio is from a arrow square equals 18 arrow is 3 so a times 3 square equals 18 so that a will be 18 over 9 a will be 2 which is a 15 says the area of a rectangular piece of cardboard paper is 104 centimeter square if its width is 8 cm Find its perimeter. Area of a rectangular shape is length times width or length times breadth. The area is given as 104. The width is given as 8. And so to find the length from here, we know that 8L equals 104. Divide both sides by 8. And 8 here, L will be 8 into 10 is 1, into 24 is 3. L is 13 cm. But what we are looking for is the perimeter. What is the perimeter of a rectangular? The perimeter is given as 2L plus width, which is 2L, which is 13, plus width, which is 8. 13 plus 8 is 21, and 2 times 21 is 42 cm, which is B. Meanwhile, if you are yet to subscribe, kindly hit the subscription button. Share this video. Like it so that others can see it too. Question 16 says, find the determinant of the matrix. How do we find the determinant? We take the first entry, we multiply it by this matrix that is left. One would read the rows and the column minus this second entry. We multiply it by this and this. One would read the rows and the column plus this third entry. Multiplying this matrix one with the rows and the column. That's all. So the determinant is two times the determinant of zero, two, two, three, minus three times the determinant of one, two, zero, three, this and this. When we have deleted this and this, plus one times the determinant of one, zero, zero, two. So the determinant of this is 2 times, 3 times 0 is 0, minus 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3, 3 minus 0, plus 1, 2 minus 0. And this is 2 times minus 4 is minus 8, minus 3 times 3 is minus 9, 1 times 2 is 2, minus 8, minus 9 is minus 17, plus 2. This will be minus 15, which is A. Question 17 says, A helicopter takes three hours from Kano to Lagos at a constant speed. How long does the same joining take another helicopter at a quarter of the speed of the first helicopter? So, the formula for speed we know as distance over time. So for the first helicopter, let's call it x1. The speed is x1. The distance is d, d1, and the time is t1. And the time for the first helicopter is 3 hours, which is d1 over 3. For the second helicopter, s2, distance, the same distance, the same d1, the time is what we are looking for, T1. But we are told something that how long does the same journey take another helicopter at a quarter of the speed of the first helicopter? 
So the speed of this second helicopter is one quarter of the first one. So this would be, this implies S1 over 4, one quarter of the first one, is the speed of this, D1. The distance of the first one, if you find it, the distance is 3 times S1, which is 3 S1. From here, we have D1 is 3 S1 if you multiply and the time is what we are looking for this T2 the time is what we are looking for so S1 can cancel S1 we take this T2 here 4 times 3 is 12 so it's 12 hours which is D question 18 says if 1 is added to the denominator of a fraction, the fraction becomes 1 over 2. When 3 is added to both the numerator and the denominator of the fraction, it becomes 3 over 4. Find the fraction. This will simply lead us to simultaneous equation. So let's start. If 1 is added to the denominator, let's start by saying let the fraction be x over y if one is added to the denominator it becomes x over y plus one the fraction becomes one over two so this fraction is one over two cross multiply will have two x equals y plus one this equation one so the next one says when 3 is added to both the numerator and denominator of the fraction this is our fraction we have got it becomes 3 over 4 so x plus 3 y plus 3 is 3 over 4 so we we'll multiply we we'll have 4x plus 12 equals 3y plus 9. We'll subtract 12 from both sides and 3y from both sides. This will be 4x minus 3y equals 9 minus 12 is minus 3. If we subtract y from both sides and multiply through by 2 just to eliminate s, we'll have 4x minus 2y equals 2 because we're multiplying through by 2. So we we'll eliminate y by subtracting minus 2y minus minus 3y, which is 3y minus 2y, we we'll have y. 2 minus minus 3, y is 5. So y is 5. So if y is 5, what is x? So from this, 2x will be 5 plus 1. 2x will be 6. x will be, the Bible said by 2, will be 3. Therefore, a over B, the fraction X over Y will be 3 over 5, which is C. This is very interesting. 19 says, Y is partly constant and partly varies as S. How do we write this kind of variation? This is what we we'll call partial variation. We have four types of variation. We have direct variation. We have inverse variation. Or indirect variation we have joint variation and we also have partial variation how do we write y is partly constant and partly varies as s we write it as y partly constant plus b and partly varies as s a s y partly constant and partly varied by s so when y is 2 S is 3. So we have 2 equals 3A plus B. And also when Y is 5, S is 6. 5 equals 6A plus B. So what we can do here is this is a simultaneous equation. We subtract 1, 2. If we do 2 minus 1, we we'll have 5 minus 2 is 3, 6a minus 3a is 3a, b minus b is 0. Variable side by 3, 
we have that a is 1. Since a is 1, we can put a as 1 in any of this equation. We put it in equation 1. From 1, 2 equals 3 times 1 plus b. That b is 2 minus 3 equals minus 1. Therefore, the relationship between x and y will be y equals a is 1 x and b is minus one minus one so which is b if you are yet to like this video please kindly do so that others can see it and also subscribe comment and share question 23 says find a quadratic equation whose roots are two and minus one over three there are two ways in which we can do this we can decide to say s equals two take the two to the left hand side becomes s minus 2 multiplying s plus 1 over 3 and then you expand you get the quadratic equation another way you can do is you remember that if alpha and beta are the root of the equation alpha plus beta is minus b over a that is the sum and alpha beta is c over a the sum of this root will be 2 plus minus 1 over 3, which is 2 minus 1 over 3, which is 6 minus 1 over, which is 5 over 3. And the product is 2 times minus 1 over 3 is minus 2 over 3. And the formula says s square minus alpha plus beta x plus alpha beta equals 0. So our alpha plus beta is 5 over 3. This is s square minus 5 over 3 x. Alpha beta is minus 2 over 3 equals 0. So I can multiply through by 3 and I will get 3 x square minus 5 x minus 2 equals 0. And the correct option is B. Now we are going to use this graph to answer all these questions. So the first question says, which of the following gives the points of intersection of the line, linear graph and the quadratic graph above? This is the linear graph. This is the quadratic graph. So the points of intersection are this. The element here, the coordinate here will be the s is 3, comma, this is 7. And the coordinate here is x is minus 1 and y is 0. So, the correct coordinate will be minus 1, comma, 0 and 3, comma, 7, which is E. Next question says, the equation of the line of symmetry is what? Line of symmetry is the perpendicular line that divides this graph into two equal halves. So this line of symmetry will be that line that passes through this. And if you see, this is 0 0.5. So the line of symmetry is x equals 0 0.5. That is the line of symmetry. The next question says, find the equation of the quadratic graph. This is the quadratic graph. To find the equation, the roots are the point where the graph cuts the x axis, which are minus 1 and 2. If you want to use this, now, let me use the second way to solve this so that you have a feel of the two methods in which you can use the roots to get the quadratic equation. The second one says, so the roots are x equals minus 1 and x equals 2. So if I take this to the left hand side, I have x plus 1 and if i take this to the left as i have times x minus 2 equals 0 if i multiply this this will give you s square s times this minus 2x 1 times s plus x 1 times minus 2 minus 2 equals 0 this is s square minus 2 plus 1 is minus x minus 2 equals 0 so the correct option is a so the next question says which of the regions U, V, S, Y, Z shown below satisfies these inequalities. Y is greater than 0 and less than 2. 
y is less than 3x, 3 plus x, and y, x is less than 0. So we are looking for the region that satisfies these inequalities. Let's start with this. S is less than 0 tells us that the region will be in the negative part of S, not in the positive part. So it will be in this side. That is what this one tells us. Take it. Y is between 0 and 2. It means it will lies between this and this. So we have gotten a boundary that it will lie in the positive part of X. And now this boundary is now giving us that it will lie between 0 and 2. So this is where we are left with this region, either Y or Z. The last one says Y is less than 3 plus S. This is the graph that shows y is equal to 3 plus s. If y is less than 3 plus x, it means y is below this line. If it is greater than 3 plus s, it is above this line. So, since we have gotten this part, and we have gotten this line, since it's less than, this is not the part, so this is where we are looking for. This is the region that satisfies this inequality. So. The region is Z, which is E. Very interesting. 25 say which of the following inequalities is represented by the number line shown below? So, in inequality, what we do is we come to the point where the circle is. The circle is at minus 1. Since it's shaded, it means it has to be equal to. Now, since it's going to the right direction, this is greater than. It's going to the right direction, it's greater than. So the correct answer will be x is greater than or equal to minus 1. x is greater than or equal to minus 1, which is e. Next question says, solve the equation 2x plus 8 equals 21x squared. The best thing to do is to rearrange it to be in the general form of a quadratic equation so if we take this to the right hand side we'll have this will be 21x square minus 2x minus 8 equals 0 so i can easily use the quadratic formula which says minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac everything over 2a so in this place our a is 21 b is minus 2 c is minus 8 so b is minus 2 minus minus is plus 2 2 plus or minus square root of b is minus 2 square which is 4 a is 21 c is minus 8 minus times minus is plus so this is plus 4 times 21 times 8 is 6 7 2 everything over 2 times 21 is 42 so this is 2 plus or minus 4 plus 672 is 676 square root of 676 over 42 square root of 676 is 26 so that this is 2 plus or minus 26 over 42 x will be 2 plus 26 over 42 or 2 minus 26 over 42 2 plus 26 is 28. We have 28 over 42. Or 2 minus 26 is minus 24 over 42. In this case, 14 can go. And if 14 goes, it will be 2 over 3. In this case, 6 can go. If 6 divides minus 24, we we'll have minus 4. If 6 divides 42, we we'll have 7. So 2 over 3 minus 4 over 7 2 over 3 which is b the next question says in an examination a candidate was asked to draw the graph of y equals x squared plus 6x minus 27 and a linear graph on the same axis such that their intersections will give the solutions to the quadratic equation this what is the equation of the linear graph this is simple so, if we are to look for the point of the intersection between the quadratic equation and the linear graph, it means 
this quadratic equation have to equal that linear graph. So let us start by saying, let the linear graph be y equals ax plus b. So for us to have the intersection, it means this must be equal to this. So that x squared plus 6x minus 27 have to be equal to ax plus b. So it is this intersection that gave rise to this quadratic equation. So if we take this here, x squared, 6x minus as, this will be 6 minus a, x minus 27 minus b, this is 27 plus b. So they said their intersection, which is this we have written, gave rise to the quadratic equation with x squared plus 5x minus 29. So these two are equal. So it means 6 minus a have to be equal to 5. 6 minus a have to be equal to 5 so that a will be 6 minus 5, which is 1. And also minus minus, meaning 27 plus b have to be equal to 29 so that b will be 29 minus 27, which is 2. Therefore, the linear graph will be y equals a is 1, x and y is 2, which is e. Next question says, what must be added to 2y squared plus 7y to make it a perfect square? So, what we would like to do first is to factorize 2 because this is not in unity. So, 2 bracket y squared plus, if we factorize 2 here, we will have 7 over 2y. So, first to add something to this to make it a perfect square we'll take half the coefficient of y half of this is 7 over 4 it's just dividing the coefficient of y by 2 so 7 over 4 we'll square it and add it so it will be 2 bracket y square plus 7 over 2y plus 7 over 4 which is half of this all square those are brackets. So this is 2 bracket y square plus 7 over 2y plus 49 over 16. So if we open the bracket, we'll have 2y square plus 7y plus 2 cancel 8. 16 is 8. 49 over 8. So it is 49 over 8 that must be added to this to make it a perfect square, which is d. The next question says, solve the simultaneous equation x plus 2y equals minus 4, 2x plus 3y equals minus 5. Let's multiply equation 1 by 2 to use elimination method so that we can eliminate x and find y. So if we do that, we'll have 2x plus 4y equals minus 8 and 2x plus 3y equals minus 5. So if we subtract Equation 2 minus equation 1, 4 minus this is y, and minus 8 plus 5 is minus 3. So y is minus 3. So if we put this for equation 1 here, x plus 2y equals minus 4. x plus 2 minus 3 equals minus 4. This is minus 6. Take it to the other side. Minus 4 plus 6. So x is 2. So I will have x equals 2, y equals minus 3. x equals 2, y equals minus 3, which is c. For the next question, we are asked to factorize 12x squared minus 3a minus 3b squared. So if we open this bracket, we'll have 12a squared minus 3. This is a squared minus 2 times a times 3 is 6ab plus minus 3 square 9b square so to open this bracket this is 12a square minus 3a square plus 18ab minus 27b square 
So 12a squared minus 3a squared is 9a squared plus 18ab minus 27b squared. 9 is common, I can factorize. So 9 will be a squared plus 2ab minus 3b squared. We look for two numbers such that when we multiply them, we will have minus 3a squared b squared. And when we add them, we will have 2ab. So the two numbers will be plus 3ab, 3ab minus ab. Plus 3ab minus ab because 3ab minus ab is 2ab and this times this is minus 3ab square. So in place of 2ab, I will replace it with 3ab minus ab. So we'll have 9 bracket a square plus 3ab minus ab minus 3b square. So what is common here is a. This will be 9 bracket a. We are left with a plus 3b. What is common here is minus b. Minus b. I'm left with a plus 3b. So that this will be a. Factorize a plus b out to be a plus 3b. And for two, so what is remaining is a minus b, which is a. Next question says, given that t is 2 pi root L over G. Find the value of T when pi is 22 over 7, L is 16, and G is 10. We are asked to find the value of T. If we substitute, we have 2 times 22 over 7 root 16 over 10. So, this is 44 over 7 times root 16 over 10 is 1.6. This will be 7.9508, which is 7.95, which is D. 32 says, expand x minus 2 multiplying x plus 6. So if we do so, this is x multiplying x plus 6 minus 2 multiplying x plus 6. So x times x, x squared, x times 6, 6x minus 2 times x minus 2x minus 2 times 6 minus 12. 6x minus 2x will have plus 4x minus 12. So the correct option is A. Next question says simplify this over this. As a mathematics student, you should grow to the point whereby to factorize a quadratic expression you should do it without solving it you look for two numbers you multiply that you will get plus 12 when you add it you get minus 8 the two numbers will simply be minus 2 minus 6 so the numerator here is x minus 2 x minus 6 denominator two numbers you multiply to get minus 6, when you add it together, you get 1, will be 3 minus 2. Because 3 minus 2 is 1, and 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. So this will be 3 bracket s plus 3, s minus 2. And this is multiplied by 9x plus 3. So we can cancel. This can go with this. This can go with this. 3 here is 1. 3 here is 3. So what we are left with is 3x minus 6, which is D. 34 says, what is the angular difference in longitude between town A, which is at latitude 47 degrees south, longitude 54 degrees east, and town B, which is at latitude 47 degrees south, longitude 47 147 degree is so 
if we notice, they are in the same side. They are in the same part of the sphere. So one is 147, the other one is 54. If I'm to sketch it, just to have an overview, this is the longitudinal axis. This is what we call the lines of longitude. This is what we call the lines of latitude. So then 47 degrees south, this is south. So the first one is 54. So this one is the 54. This is our A. The next one is B. This is our B, 147. This is 147. So this, because they are in the same side, for us to find their angular difference, we subtract. If they are in different side, we add. So this will be 147 minus 54, which should give us 93 degrees, which is A. The next question says, in the diagram below, zero is the center of the circle, P, Q, R, O, and if angle Q, P, R, O is 64 degree, and angle Q, R, O, P is 46 degree, calculate P, O, Q. So we're looking for this angle. To find angle P, O, Q, we have nothing much to do because from circle theorem, we remember the angle that says angle at center is twice angle at circumference. Angle P, O, Q is simply twice 46 because angle at center is twice angle at circumference. So 2 times 46 is 92 degrees, which is C. In the figures below, find the value of L in meters. For us to find the value of M, this is similar triangle. And by similar triangle, it means L over 420 has to be equal to 18 over 24. L has to be equal to 420 times 18 over 24. C here is 3. C here is 4. 4 into 420 is 105. And 105 times 3 is 315. So that is E. Question 37 says, the next question says, find the gradient of the curve y equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 1 at the point x equals 4. For us to find the gradient of the point, we, we take the derivatives. So y is 2x squared plus 5x minus 1. The y, the x is 2 times 2 is 4. Subtract 1 from the power. This is 5. So this is same as y prime. So find y prime at 4. To substitute 4 here, we have 4 times 4 plus 5. This is 16 plus 5, which is 21, which is E. Next question says, an interior angle of a regular polygon is 108 degree. Find the number of sides of the polygon. Easy way to go about this is remember that the interior angle plus exterior angle sum up to 180 degrees. So if the interior is 108, the exterior angle will be 180 minus 108 degrees, which is 72 degrees. And also, for us to find the number of sides, we also know that one exterior angle is same as one exterior angle is 360 over number of sides. And I've known the exterior angle, which is 72. If I make n the subject of formula, n will have to be 360 over 72. And 360 over 72 will be 5.
Next question says, A, B, C is an isosceles triangle where E and D are points on A, C and B, C respectively, such that B, E is perpendicular to A, C and E, D is perpendicular to B, C. If angle A, B, E is 68 degrees and angle A is equal to angle C, find angle C, E, D. So let's sketch it here. So if this is the isosceles triangle, let's put the angles that are equal at the base. Here is A, here is B, and here is C. So let's draw. So this is the isosceles triangle because these two are equal. Since they are equal, let's call here X, X. E and D are points on AC, AC. So here is E and BC, BC. Here is D. Such that BE is perpendicular to AC. BE is perpendicular to AC, which is this. And ED is perpendicular to BC. E, D is perpendicular to B, C. So, this is perpendicular. This is perpendicular. And this is perpendicular. If A, B, E, A, B, E is 68 degrees, A, B, E, 68 degrees, and angle A is equal to angle C, find angle C, E, D. C, E, D. We're looking for this angle. So, since this is a right angle triangle, X will be 90 minus. X will be 90 minus 68 degrees. And 90 minus 68 is 22 degrees. We have gotten S as 22 degrees. So, we are looking for angle C, E, D. C, E, D. Let's call it Y. So since S is 22 degrees, Y plus 22 degrees have to be 90 degrees. So that Y will be 90 minus 22. 90 minus 22 will be 68 degrees too. So, y is 68 degrees. Next question says, in the figure below, 0 is the center of the circle. Calculate the value of x. We are looking for this value of x. Circle theorem is very interesting. Make sure you check my channel on circle theorem series or cyclic quadrilateral series. And you will see a lot that have been done. How do we find S? We always try to start from where we know. Since here is 40, here is also 40 by angle on the same segment. So angle C is 40 degrees by angle on the same segment. So I've got in here as 40 degrees. So what is this angle? For me to get this angle, angle E, it will be this plus this, I subtract it from 180. Angle E is 180 minus, that is sum of angle in the triangle. 34 plus 40, which is 64. Minus 34 plus 40. This is 74. 180 minus 74 is 106. So now, since here is 106, I will use the property that exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angle. So that 106 degrees have to be equal to x plus 40. So that x will now be 106 degrees minus 40 degrees. This is 
66 degrees, which is B. The next question says, in the diagram below, zero is the center of the circle. DB, line DB equals line BC, and angle ABC is 54 degrees. Find angle ACD, angle ACD. So we are looking for this angle. These two lines implies from what they told us that these two are equal. So if these two lines are equal, it means their angles have to be equal. So if we call here S, we call here S. So let's look for S from sum of angle in a triangle. S plus X plus 54 degrees equals 180 degrees. 2X subtract 54 from both sides equals 180 degrees minus 54. 2s 180 minus 54 will be 126 and if we divide both sides by 2 x will be 63 if we take note the line passes through the center through the diameter so what comes to mind is angle in a semicircle so angle in a semicircle is a right angle so this angle angle a c b is 90 degrees Angle ACB equals 90 degrees. The reason is angle in a semicircle. So since angle ACB equals 90 degrees, let me put it angle in a semicircle and angle DCB is X, which we have gotten as the three. So angle ACD, angle ACD will simply mean 90 minus 63 we have gotten and 90 minus 63 will be 27 degrees which is e next question says determine the value of 7x in the diagram below this is very interesting these two lines are equal means these two angles are equal if here is 2x from Vertically opposite angles, here is 2x, and because these two lines are equal, their angles have to be equal, so here is 2x. Vertically opposite angles, so here will be 5x. So let's look for s before we look for 7x. Sum of angle in a triangle gives 180, so we we'll have 2x plus 2x plus 5x gives 180. This is 9x equals 180, we'll divide by 9. So that x is 9 here is 2 that is 20 therefore 7x will be 7 times 20 which is 140 degrees and that is e next question says in the diagram below k t n is a tangent to the circle at t find the angle nta nta one thing I like about circle theorem is know the theorems and apply. I have done a good job in my circle theorem series. Check it up and enjoy. So there's nothing much to do here. We just apply the theorem. We are looking for this angle. For one of the circle theorems, we know that angle in the alternate segment are equal. So angle NTA simply equals 65 degrees the reason is angle in the alternate segment question 44 says an aeroplane flies from a turn p on a bearing of 45 degrees to a turn q a distance 200 and 200 kilometers so let's sketch this is the turn p on the bearing of 45 degrees, you take your bearing from the North Pole. So this is 45 degrees. On a distance of 200 kilometer to a turn Q. This is Q. If here is 45 degrees, here is 45 degrees also. We call it alternate angles. It changes its course to a turn R on a bearing of 120 degrees. So 
this bearing is 120 degrees and what we are told that arrow is directly east of p so arrow is directly east of p so this is arrow so if here is 120 degrees here is 60 degrees to make it 180 this angle here is 45 degrees to make it 90 and since here is 120 the whole of here is 120 degrees and this angle is 90 120 minus 90 you are left with 30 degrees here is 30 degrees so we are asked to calculate line p arrow this let's call it s we can simply use sine rule from sine rule we can say x over sine of the angle opposite it sine 45 plus 60 is 105 equals we know this length 200 over sine the angle opposite it 30 degrees so that x will be 200 sine 105 degrees over sine 30 if we, multiply, if we multiply 200 sine 105 degrees and divide by sine 30, which is 1 over 2, we will have approximately 386 kilometers, which is A. So for others, this C. And 45 says, if the angle of depression of a boy standing on the ground from the top of a house, is 72 degrees let's interpret it this is the house this is the boy this is the horizontal so the angle look at the boy's eye level the angle of depression is 72 degrees so we are told that the angle of depression of a boy standing on the ground from the top of a house is 72 degrees angle of depression is the angle facing down of the house to the horizontal so this is the angle of depression of the house 72 degrees and from alternate angles this is 72 degrees also what is the angle of elevation of the top of the house from the boy the angle of elevation from the top of the house from the boy will be the angle between the boy's eye and his normal eye level, which is 72 degrees. So the answer is 72 degrees, which is C. If you are here to like this video, please kindly hit it and also send it to your friends. Subscribe. Next question says, if cos theta is 0 0.8, which is 4 over 5, and theta is in, the, is in the first quadrant, find tan theta. So, since cos theta is 0 0.8, cos theta is 4 over 5, and if this is cos theta, we know is adjacent over hypotenuse. This is our adjacent for this is our hypotenuse five. To find tan theta, we need to know the opposite. Let's call here h. How do we find h? From Pythagoras theorem, we know that h square is five square minus four square. H square is twenty five minus sixteen. H square is nine. H is positive square root of 9 which is 3 so tan theta is opposite over adjacent and opposite we have gotten as 3 and adjacent is 4 so 3 over 4 b a ladder x meters long leans against a vertical pole so this is the pole this is the horizontal ground this is a ladder so a ladder s meter long so this is ladder x meter leans against a vertical pole of 12 meter this 12 meter 
making an angle of 54 degrees with the horizontal ground, 54 degrees with the horizontal ground, calculate the value of S correct to three significant figure. So we use three ratios also. To find the value of x, this is adjacent hypotenuse. What comes to mind is cos. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, and we have we have cos 54 degrees. Adjacent is 12. Hypotenuse is x. So s will be 12 over cos 54. Cos 54 is 0 0.5877 which is 20.418. The correct option is C. Question 48 says, if 1.109 liters of water is poured into a cylindrical container of base radius 4.2 cm, find the level of water correct to two significant figures. The first thing we have to do is to convert these liters to centimeter cube. Remember that one liter is 1000 centimeter cube so 1.109 liters will be 1000 times 1.109 which is 1109 centimeter cube so this is the volume of a cylinder that water is poured into so we recall volume of a cylinder is pi r square h and the volume is 1109 pi is 22 over 7 radius is 4.2 square times h so our h will now be 1109 times 7 over 22 times 4.2 square we will get 20.003 and to three significant to two significant figure will be 20.00 which is d calculate the deviation of the following scores 4 5 3 2 1 we have to calculate the mean first so to find the mean it is summation of x i running from 1 to n over the number of terms given so which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 over 5 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 10, 15, 15 over 5, which is 3. We have to first of all find the deviation, square it, sum all the square deviation and divide it by the number of terms, which is 5. So this will be 4 minus 3 all square plus 5 minus 3 all square plus 3 minus 3 all square plus 2 minus 3 all square plus 1 minus 3 all square everything divided by number 5 so 4 minus 3 is 1 1 square is 1 plus 5 minus 3 is 2 2 square is 4 3 minus 3 is 0 2 minus 3 is 1 1 square is 1 1 minus 3 is minus 2 2 square is 4 over 5. So this is 5 plus 5, 10. This is 10 over 5. This is 2. E. Next question says, what is the probability that an integer selected from the set 1 to 30 is a prime number? So remember, probability is number of required outcome over number of possible outcome. So the required outcome is number of prime numbers. How many prime numbers are here? Let's list them. So prime numbers. In this set will be two those numbers that has only two factors itself and one two three five seven eleven thirteen seventeen twenty three twenty nine 
these are the prime numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this will be 9 over 30. 3 can go. This is 3 over 10, which is D. Okay, the next problem says two balls are taken one after the other from a bag without replacement. If the bag contains four red and six blue balls, what is the probability that they are of different colors? So, total ball, total balls will be four red plus six blue, which is ten balls. The probability that they are of different color will be red blue or blue red without replacement so remember probability is number of required outcome over number of possible outcome so probability of red will be 4 over 10 times probability of blue without replacement so the total ball has decreased by 1 which is 9 so probability of picking blue will be 6 over 9 or or we add probability of blue which is 6 over 10 times probability of red the total ball have decreased by 1 which is 4 over 9 so this will give us 24 over 90 plus 24 over 90 this is 48 over 90 what can go so six can go here eight times six can go here 15 times so the probability is 8 over 15. the pie chart below shows the distribution of candidates that sat for certain subject in a school certificate examination use the information to answer the questions below 52 and 3. So 52 says, what angle represent the student that sat for the economics? So remember angle at the point is 360. So to find this angle, let's call it theta. So theta plus 150 degrees plus 20 degrees plus 70 degrees must equal 360 degrees. And so 70 plus 20 is 90 and 90 plus 150 is 240 so theta will be 360 minus 240 degrees which will be 120 degrees so theta is 120 degrees next problem say what percentage of the students sat for english english language correct to the nearest whole number so percentage of students that sat for english Will be percentage for English will be 150 over the total angle which is 360 times 100 over 1 0 can cancel 0 is 41.66 approximately 41 42 percent which is E next problem says Find the mean of the frequency distribution below correct to one decimal place. Remember mean is for the summation of fx over summation of f, which will be fs will be 9 times 2, 18 plus 20 plus 21 plus 56 plus 72 plus 20 all over 9 plus 4 plus 3 plus 7 plus 8 plus 2 to be 207 over 33 and if we divide we we'll have 6.27 approximately 6.3 to one decimal place next problem says the table below shows the scores of applicants in an interview if an applicant is choosing at random, what's the probability that he scored at most 8 marks? He scored at most 8 marks means his highest is 8. So we are looking for those that scores from 6, 7, 
8. So, the probability that an applicant choosing a stratum scores at most, probability of at most 8 marks will be, remember probability if number of required outcome over number of possible outcome. So at most 8 marks is from 8 below, 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 2 is 8, over the number of possible outcome, 8 plus 8 is 16, which is 1 over 2, which is E. It means there is 50% chance that the person picked at random scored at least 8. Next question says, a box contains 20 oranges. 14 of them are ripe and 6 unripe. If two oranges are taken one after the other with replacement, so when you take it, you replace it back, find the probability that one is ripe and the other is unripe. So the probability, the total oranges are 20. Unripe probability of ripe will be 14 over 20. Probability of unripe will be 6 over 20. So if we take two oranges one after the other with replacement, we are not told the order of how we take the oranges. So one can decide to take out of probability, out of chance, pick the ripe first before the unripe, or can pick the unripe first before the ripe. So because of that, the probability will be ripe, unripe, or unripe, ripe. So probability of ripe will be 14 over 20 without replacement. So the total oranges is still intact times 6 over 20 or unripe, 6 over 20 times ripe, 14 over 20. So we can reduce this. For easy calculation, 2 here is 7, 2 here is 2, 10, 2 here is 3, 2 here is 10, 2 here 3, 2 here 10, 2 here 7, 2 here 10. So we we'll have 21 over 100 plus 21 over 100, which is 42 over 100. And we can still reduce 2 can go, which is 21 over 50. The answer is C. Next question says, the mean of the set of numbers 2, 5, X, and 6 is 4. What is the value of X? So, remember, formula for mean is sum of X over N, or the frequency. So we have that 2 plus 5 plus x plus 6, there are four numbers, equals 4. 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 plus 6 is 13. So 13 plus x equals 16. So that x will be 16 minus 13. x will be 3. Okay. Evaluate the integral. This is what we call definite integral because we will have an answer of 2x minus x squared dx. So if we integrate this, we will have 2x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3. 0 to 2. So these two can cancel this. So we will put the upper limit. We will have 2 squared minus 2 cube over 3. If we put 0, we we'll have 0. So if we simplify this, this is 4 minus 8 over 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 
and 12 minus 8 is 4 over 3. So the answer is 4 over 3, which is same as 1 number 1 over 3. And that is C. Next question says, if y is 3x squared minus 4x minus 12, find the value of x when the y the x is 0. So find the value of x when the y the x is 0. Let's find the y the x. The y, the x will be 6x minus 4 equals 0. We equate this to 0. So if we add 4 to both sides, we have 6x equals 4. Divide by 6, divide by 6. x will be 4 over 6 and you can go 2 over 3, which is C. Finally, question 60 says, a particle moves in a straight line such that its velocity after 4 seconds is 3t plus 4 meter per second. Find the distance traveled in 4 seconds. So, if we have distance and we differentiate it, we will get velocity. And if we differentiate a velocity function, we will get acceleration. Likewise, if we integrate an acceleration function, we will get velocity. If we integrate a velocity function, we'll get distance. So what we're going to do is to integrate this velocity function and get what distance is. And then substitute 4. And then substitute 4 for t. And then get what the distance is. So we'll have integral of 3t plus 4 dt. If we integrate this, we'll have 3t squared over 2 plus 4t. So the distance will now be 3 substitute for 4 square over 2 plus 4 times 4. 4 square is 16. 16 times 3 is 48. And 48 over 2. 48 over 2 is 24 plus 16. 24 plus 16 is 40 meters. Which is C. Thank you for watching. If you have stayed up to this time, it shows you are a serious student. And I wish you all the best. You can check my YouTube channel for other interesting content and expect more questions like this for other years, for YA, for SAT, for art, and the likes. Make sure you hit the subscription button. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.